Well, good morning everybody. This is Lynn again. I know it's been quite some time since I have videoed anything, so bear with me because I had to figure out how to set everything up again. A lot has gone on since I last videoed. Um, we sold our home and I've moved into the basement of my parents' home to take care of them. My dad has Alzheimer's. My mom is in poor physical health, so I stay really, really busy with that, and a lot of you who know me know I have a special needs daughter also, and she is really, really struggling at school right now, so, who it's been a roller coaster, but, um, let's see, I think Barbara reached out to me and wanted to know how I made, specifically this background, um, and I thought, you know, I can take pictures of the process or I can just do a video and then that way other people maybe can benefit from it. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes and do that with you today. I'm going to change up the colors because um, a, lot of, a lot of you know I have a lot of backgrounds. I, I have always have backgrounds. I like to make backgrounds. But part of the reason I have so many is because <clears throat> when I do this particular um, technique I end up with you know four and five backgrounds out of the same colors. so I'm going to change up the colors today so I don't have more of the blues and rust colors I'm going to go with more springy colors um, on this and to do this technique you just need a couple of things you need a stencil um, this one that I'm using today is a Tim Holtz um, let's see what it's called layering bouquet layering stencil just got that and I really liked it um, but you know if you look at this stencil and you see if you uh, colored in the areas it would it would look one way um, and I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to show you how I use the stencil to give me a different image completely so um, you'll need a stencil you'll need some spray stains or oxides and what I always start with is I cut up um, one piece of watercolor paper into thirds so they end up looking like this. It depends on the, the stencil actually. This is a, um, a slimline stencil so that's why I cut them in this fashion. If I was doing an A2 size I would you know, cut it up in four pieces and use that. And then I also cut up a, uh, in thirds a piece of um, just inexpensive cardstock and you're going to see that um, they make very different backgrounds the cardstock ones uh, are just different they're more precise I guess than watercolor because watercolor is made to let the water and the colors bleed a little bit so um, this one that says get well soon was a this is a piece of cardstock and this one uh, is this same I took it from the same uh, spray but this on watercolor paper and then I added a little extra color to it to tone down some of the white but anyway that's just to show you that they are very very different <clears throat> mostly because this one's very white okay so let's just take a minute and jump right into this and I apologize that my hands look like they do they are very very banged up and uh, as I said life has changed for me around here okay Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is that you don't have to have a stencil to do this technique. I also went out into my yard and got um, some leaves, and they were on a branch, so they're little bitty leaves, and you can see that it looks like this. Um, but the actual leaves, when I laid them down and I sprayed them, came out like this. So the spray is all around the leaves rather than where the leaves are. But by using this technique, I was able to saturate up some of that ink and use the ink off of the leaves directly onto my paper. So you're not limited to stencils is what I'm going to say. All right. And this is very, very basic. And I'm sure that somebody out there has put videos on it. But since somebody asked me to tell them how I did it, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to lay it down and put my stencil on top of it. Okay, and you can tape it down if you want, but I'm, I'm not going to do that I, because I want to be able to move it fairly quickly. And I'm just going to randomly take my sprays and spray some color on here.
and I just I'm trying to use some spring year kind of colors that's to make some Easter cards and so forth and I'm just going to try to make sure that it's covered well okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my stencil right off of this and try not to smudge it any and see that is what the spray would look like and it's very stark and um, bright because it's the first coating of spray on there and it went into the negative spots I guess is how you could say that I'm not sure if you call those negative or positive but anyway that is on watercolor paper now I'm going to set that aside flat so it doesn't run and I'm going to take another piece of watercolor paper another plain one and I'm just going to lightly very lightly mist this just to give it a little bit of water onto the paper and I'm going to lay it upside down on the stencil and I'm just going to rub it on there and I'm going to gently lift it off and now you have this so you can see that the negative is very different but it's still pretty and it's still something you can use okay and then like I said I can usually get four or five prints off this next I'm going to take just my cardstock this is just inexpensive cardstock I pick up at Walmart in a package of about 200 I think Georgia Pacific makes it and I'm going to lightly mist my stencil once again and I'm going to lay this on it and I'm going to rub it on there. Sometimes I'll actually get this little thing out because I get very inky doing this. And when you do the cardstock, you'll see that it will start actually kind of coming through because it's not made to hold water. But see, isn't that a pretty image also? And that image is what I used to make this one. So that was the third impression and it was um, done on cardstock. All right. And I'll take one more piece of cardstock. I will miss this one more time. It's not going to pull much, but it will still pull something. And it will still be usable. I can add other things, uh, stamped images, script, um, just very various other things, even some crackle onto it just to, to change it up a little bit. And there. So I got four off of this one. I could probably flip this over and maybe get another one. It doesn't look like it has a lot of ink on the back though. So that's it guys. It's, it's really simple and we have the positive, the negative on watercolor paper, and then we have the cardstock one and cardstock two. But that this would be so pretty with just some script across it and maybe a couple of the um, die cut flowers added to it. Just use it as a light background. The other thing I could have done is I could have used some green on here. I love Twisted Citron, as you all know. Um, but I chose not to do it because sometimes green can, if it runs too much, it can get kind of, um, well, it can turn brown. So I didn't do that. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, hopefully I can be back with some more now that I'm sort of settling in here and uh, my space is much smaller. But, you know, we just have to do what we have to do. So have, hope you all have a great day and I hope this helps somebody. Thanks.